I'm Mildred Figueroa, Mildred Lois Figueroa. And what is your maiden name? My maiden name was uh, Mildred Lois Jordan, J-O-U-R-D-A-N. Did you spell the rest of your name correctly? Um, my full name? I yes. Know. Okay, Mildred, M-I-L-D-R-E-D-L-O-I-S. J O U R D A N F I G U E R O A. Okay, where were you born, Mildred? Um, I was born in uh, Seymour. In Seymour? Mm -hmm. in Seymour? Uh, my mother and dad lived at, um, oh, I can't remember the address, 18 something on Highway 54. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born there. And uh, what were your parents' names? My mother's name was Mamie um, Paulus Jordan, and my father's name was Henry Ephraim Jordan. Okay, we'll start with your father. Could you give us your grandparents' names on your father's side? Um, I think his father's name was Ephraim Henry Jordan. He used to spell it J-O-U-R-D-A-I-N. My father dropped the I. But um, then my mother's maiden name is, uh, oh, <laughs> you want to just, my, my grandmother. My, grandmother. my grandmother's name was uh, Elsie um, Christian, I think her last name used to be. And then she married Henry, uh, Ephraim Henry. And uh, then could we go to your mother's uh, parents? And my mother's, I, I'm not too sure about my mother's parents' names. Um, she didn't talk about them that much. I can't remember what her father's name was. But he was a Paulus, I know, but I don't know. remember what his name is. Mm -hmm. And you don't remember her mother's name at all? Uh, no, I don't. And uh, did your parents ever talk about if they went away to school or? Yes, my mother went to um, Toma, I believe, and my father was in school in um, what was the name of that other school up there? Maybe somebody remembers Wittenberg. Wittenberg, uh, yeah. Wittenberg? My father was went to Wittenberg. Okay, and did they? Did they say how far they went in school? Uh, my dad went to, I believe, sixth grade. And then uh, my mother, uh, his mother brought him home and they never sent him back. And my mother went to eighth grade, I believe. And then when her parent, when her grandparents brought her back, she was raised by her grandparents. Oh. Do you, do you know who her grandparents were? Um, all I know is his name was Chief Dockstater, I think. Chief Dockstater? That's all, that's all I ever heard him call was Chief <coughs> Dockstater. Okay. What about her grandmother? Did you know her name? I don't remember what her name was. Um, how about on your father's side? Did you know your father's grandparents? Or no, parents? no. Uh, his, his, his father's parents were from Canada. Oh, they were from Canada. And uh, uh, she, I don't know what his, what, um, what Elsie's parents' names were. But she was in Oneida and she lived in Oneida, but I don't remember what her, what her parents' names were. Oh, okay. The person that came from Canada, were they Oneida also? No, they were uh, Stockbridge and some Canadian tribe. I can't remember the name of the tribe. Oh, okay. okay then, uh, do you know if your grandparents on your father's side, do you know if they went to school at all? I don't think so. Um, I've never heard them mention, mentioned where, whether they went to school or not, but uh, my grandmother and my grandfather separated and were separated for a long time. So that's Elsie and Ethan? Yeah. I don't know where he went to. I only saw him once when I was about two years old, and I really don't recall what he looked like or anything. Did your father have any uh, brothers and sisters? 
Yes, he had um, six brothers, I believe, and four sisters. Do you know their name? Mm-hmm. Um, Cynthia, Cynthia Jordan, and Raymond Jordan, and then my dad, and then there was Vernon, and um, I'm trying to remember because we always called them by nicknames. Oh, <laughs> Vernon. Um, Oh, I can't remember what his name is. All I can even think of is his name. Melvin? Uh, Demuck. Melvin? Demuck, I think his name was Edmund or something. Ed Edmund, and then there was um, Vera and Matilda. And then uh, Melvin and Norbert and Irvin. Their last names are all Jordan? Mm, uh, well, Irvin, Irvin changed his name when he was about 18, I think. He changed his name to Thompson because my grandmother uh, lived with another man for a long time, and his name was Thompson. Oh, and that was Irvin's father? Yeah. Okay. And he just, he just called himself by Thompson rather than Jordan. I guess it just was his own decision to use his, his own father's name. Oh, okay. But that was his real father. Yeah. Okay. And what about uh, your mother? Did she have any sisters and brothers? She had, um, let's see, Bob, I think he was the oldest, Robert Paulus, and then uh, Edmund Paulus, and Lillian Paulus, and... Uh, she had a couple of other brothers and sisters, but I can't remember what their names were. They, her father had remarried, and he had um, two other children, I think, it was two. I can't remember what their names were, but... Um, okay. You said your, gra your, your grandmother, or no, your mother lived, was raised by her grandparents? Yes, yeah, she was raised by her grandparents from the time she was about four, I think. And were her then, sisters and brothers also raised by her? No, just her. Uh, the brothers were, and sisters were all, were quite a bit older than her. And they were raised, they were away at school. I don't remember what schools they were sent to, but they were living in, in school someplace. And your mother used to went to Toma? My mother went to Toma. But I don't think her brothers and sisters went there. She never mentioned that she had brothers and sisters there with her. Did you spend a lot of time with your, your grandparents on your father's side, your grandmother? Uh, quite a bit of time with my grandmother when I was young. Then we moved to Freedom, and uh, I didn't see her quite as often because they didn't have a car, and we didn't have a car, so uh, I didn't see them. I didn't see them as often. They moved to Freedom. Yeah, we moved to Freedom. Oh, you did. Oh, we okay. did. Yeah, my mother and dad. Oh, okay. And uh, we lived in Freedom for oh years and years, from the time I was about oh maybe eight or nine until just before I started high school. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went to school at Idlewild to begin with, and then I went to a little school in Freedom, a little one of those little country schools. Uh -huh. And uh, I started there, and then I went, when we moved back into my grandmother's house. Well, my grandmother had the house there for a long time. It, it's this went on 54? On 54, yeah, they lived there for a long time. And then she moved to uh, Seymour, her, her and uh, her daughter Vera moved to Seymour, and uh, the house kind of fell apart, and then the the tribe wanted her to decide whether she wanted somebody to live there from the family or if she wanted to give it back to the tribe. And um, she talked my dad into moving back there, and uh, so we moved back there. We had to 
rebuild the house practically because it was so far, you know, there were no windows, no doors or anything and they had to re re rebuild it. Well, we lived there for from the time I was in eighth grade, I think. I started, I started at Idlewild in, no, I was in seventh grade. We started in, I, I started school in Idlewild for two years and then I went to um, Pine Grove mm -hmm. and after that I went to high school. And I went to Green Bay East. Did you graduate from Green Bay East? Uh, no, I got sick in my junior year, and they said I had to redo my to redo my senior year. Well, I didn't do it, and when I was 19, I went to Chicago, and I finished uh, high school at um, uh, what in the world is the name of that school? I'm thinking it was called Thompson. Was that in Chicago? It was, uh, it was a school in, ta in Chicago for uh, children who had not finished school or for uh, people from other countries that were coming here to learn um, English and learn to become citizens and things. That's where I went to school and I, f I graduated from high school from there. And then from there I went to um, an extension of Columbia University and I worked my way through through college, I, I became an RN, and I graduated from uh, Columbia. And then I worked for two years in Chicago at uh, Illinois Masonic Hospital as a nurse. And then I, I decided I didn't like it, so I went, I went back to their school. They had a um, training school for uh, nursing assistants and I went there for a year, and then I become, became an, uh, a nursing assistant. And then that's what I did for, I worked, uh, oh, let's see what, three years, I think, in Chicago. And then we moved out here, and I worked for two years at, uh, Oh, they changed the name of that place now. I can't remember what it was. There's a nursing home right by, by, by on the corner by uh, um, where the hospitals are there on... on oh, Americana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I worked for two years at Americana. And then we moved, we bought a home in, um, in Stiles. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Stiles for... Oh, 15 years, 20 years, and I worked at uh, at, a, at a nursing home in Ocado for most of that time. And when did you get married? I got married in 1951. And what is your husband's name? My husband's name was Francisco G. Figueroa, and um, he was from Puerto Rico. And uh, we lived in Chicago for, what, 30 years, something like that. And do you have children? I have four children. Could you give us their names? Uh, my oldest son is named, is Frank, Ronald Jordan, uh, Figaro, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my names confused here. That's okay. <laughs> uh, that's Frank, and then uh, Linda, Elena, and then uh, Tina Louise and Richard Lee. Do they all live here? They or? all live here in Green Bay now. For a while, Tina lived in New York, and for a while, Linda lived in St. Louis. And um, they're all back home now. Okay. We'll go back to your father. Could you tell us what kind of work his father did? <laughs> My father was a farmer all his life. He worked on WPA for a couple of years when doing the depression when it was so hard to find jobs. Uh, he worked there and then he got the job working on this farm in Freedom. And uh, that's what he did for the rest of his life. He worked for Harvey Moss for, oh, a long time, 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Mm -hmm. And did, you, did your mother work outside the home too? 
Um, not until she got, not until after my f my father died, she worked for the tribe as a as a uh, language teacher for the preschool. She worked. I don't know how long she worked there. Two or three years, I think. And then Is that she. Like the Head Start. Program? Yeah, that was what it was. The Head Start. Mm -hmm. She she taught the Oneida language for the Head Start. Did your mother and father both speak Oneida? Mm -hmm. Did um, you learn to speak Oneida? I spoke, I spoke Oneida when I was a child, but then when I went to school, my mother and my, everybody was telling me, well, you got to learn to, you got to, I spoke English and Oneida, and they were telling me, well, you're going to school, you have to learn, you have to speak English all the time because they don't understand. So I started speaking, I started, I spoke English primarily for a long time. And for a long time, my grandmother wouldn't talk to me unless I spoke Oneida. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of both, both languages there for a while. And I don't know, gradually I got to where I, I stopped speaking the Oneida language. And um, I understand quite a bit of it now when I listen to, if I listen after, for a while to when I was talking, I can I understand what they're saying. I get the idea of what they're saying, but if they ask me a direct question, I can't remember what words to use. So I kind of lost my language, but uh, I understand quite a bit of it. Do you think you'll try speaking it again? Um, I really don't have you know, any occasions to speak it. You know, I don't. Uh, for a long time, we didn't. We were not uh, affiliated with the tribe that mm -hmm. closely, mm -hmm. because we lived so far away, and uh, we lived among the white people, and that's what we spoke was English. So uh, it got to where I didn't use it that much anymore. And gradually, as I grew older too, my grandmother stopped forcing me to speak Oneida. And she would speak English to me too, but uh, so, you know, ap after a few years, you you forget yeah. how to how to talk or what to say. I understand most of what's said, what's being said, but I I can't answer. Did you say you didn't know your mother's grandparents? No, I didn't know my mother's grandparents. Um, I think my grandmother died when I was about two or three years old. And my grandfather a short time after that, so I really don't remember them very clearly. Do you know where your mother went after uh, your grandparents died? Then, well, she was all she was she was already married, I think, when they okay. died. Yeah, she would have been married because you were. Yeah. Okay. She was already married when they died, so. Uh, before that, before that, she went to school at some school in Hobart. I don't remember. I don't know. I, I, the geography is not clear, but she said that she went to school in Hobart. Do you know where where they lived when she was growing up? Um, they lived right about where the. No, maybe just a little bit farther up. Some place in that area where the where the um, little bear is. Oh, okay. In that in that area someplace. I'm not quite sure of the geography, but I'm it's in that area someplace. Oh, okay. So then they probably had property there. The yeah, they had land in that area uh, because my grandfather was a farmer, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess he farmed the land that he lived in, that they, where they lived. I'm I'm not I can't remember just exactly where it was, but it was someplace in that in that area and it was maybe just a little bit farther west mm -hmm. of where uh, Little Bear is. Mm -hmm. on your, uh, your grandmother on your father's side, uh, did she do any kind of um, crafts at all? No. She, she didn't do any bags? Oh yeah, she did too. She used to make rugs, rag rugs. Oh, okay. You know, where she'd tear strips of rags and yeah. uh, braid them and make rugs. She made a lot of those and sold them. Did anybody um, that you knew in your family background make baskets? Um, she used to. Um, I think my mother said 
She used to know how to make baskets, but she was blind. And she had Your been... Your grandmother was blind? Yeah, she had been blind for her since about when she was about 30 years old, I guess. And so after she lost her eyesight, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't do the weaving on the baskets anymore. Did she ever tell you what caused her to lose her eyesight? She was a diabetic. Oh, she's a diabetic. Yeah, and she lost, that, that's the form it took. She yeah. lost her eyesight. Quite young. Quite young. She was only in her 30s. Um, do you know if um, your mother did a lot of canning? Oh, yeah. She, that's, that was our main food source when she was, when we were children, because she would, she canned everything that came along, corn, and when they, when they butchered, she canned meat, and um, strawberries, we had strawberry beds, huge strawberry beds, and it seemed like we were constantly overrun with strawberries. <laughs> and she made strawberry jelly and strawberry jam and canned strawberries and tomatoes. And uh, they, they uh, used to raise their own potatoes. They'd put those in sand in the basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, carrots, onions, everything I guess that's possible. You know, she had squash. And, to me on uh, pumpkins, because mm -hmm. I remember, I don't remember ever being hungry as a child, even though this was during the Depression, because we always had, um, we always raised our own food, mm -hmm. and then we lived on a farm from the time I was like about six, I think, before, it was before I started school, maybe four or six years old. We lived on on this farm, and the farmer that my dad worked for gave him about three acres of land to do with as he pleased. And uh, he raised, he plant, my mother, him and my mother planted everything. And uh, when this farmer butchered, we got part of the meat. And the the farmer's sister raised chickens, so we had eggs and chicken and everything. So we never. We never wanted for anything. Because of the cows, we had milk, and my mother used to make uh, butter and cheese. Did she do a lot of baking? A lot of baking. I don't think we ever bought bread. She baked every, she was baking every other day, like. But, uh, and she baked pies and cookies and everything, so. She did a lot of baking. She was constantly baking or cooking something. <laughs> We, we, we have to pause for a second. Okay, um, okay we're rolling. We were talking about your mother, that she did a lot of baking. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did your mother make um, any corn soup or cornbread? Yeah, she made corn soup. She used to raise her own uh, white, the white corn, mm -hmm. um, Indian corn. Mm -hmm. She used to raise that, too, um, in her garden. And um, she did the whole process. And it was a lengthy process of preparing the corn for cooking, and uh, she did the whole thing. Okay, and then now we go to your um, your sisters and brothers. Could you give us their names? <clears throat> um, I'm the eldest, and uh, the next next one to me is uh, Barbara. She her name is Mackenzie now. And uh, then uh, Virgil. Uh, he died. Uh, a couple of years ago. He was in the service for almost 30 years. And uh, next is um, Ronald. And then uh, Yvonne and Pat and Kenny and Judy and Henry and Diane. Oh, there's one in between, uh, Henrietta. <laughs> so that, how many that, you said all together? Yeah, that, that that's. Uh, let's see. I keep saying I'm the oldest of thirteen children, but there was two that died. So that's ten, I think. Ten that are living. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, nine, because Lucky died last couple of years ago. Okay, and do they all live in that area here? Uh, Ron lives in Chicago. 
had, and he's lived in Chicago for a long time. And uh, Henrietta lives in Chicago. And Barbara and her husband Jim moved back out here oh, maybe five years ago. They live out by um, um, the Methodist Church. Oh, okay. In Oneida here, you mean? Mm-hmm. But everybody else lives here. Uh, Judy lives in Green Bay. Uh, Yvonne lives on the family property out on uh, 54. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, Henry lives in Chicago. Let's see who else. Uh, Judy and Pat and Yvonne live out here. Pat lives on Pine Pine, pine tree. Pine tree road, right. <laughs> do you um, do you do any of the get into any of the activities for the elders? No, not really. No. Um, I had to stop driving a few years ago. I have a cataract in my eye and I can't see clearly. So my children are refusing to let me drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't drive very. I don't drive any place by myself. And then I, I lost one leg, uh, four years ago. Um, I'm a diabetic, and I got an infection in my toe, and I uh, had my leg amputated. Oh. So I have difficulty anyway driving because of it's my right leg, and you know it's hard to control the gas with that with that leg with that leg. I, although I did have a car that was modified so I could use it, but I never did drive. Um, so I don't do much with the activities. I work part-time uh, for Dave Larson. I'm administrative assistant to Dave Larson over at Elderly Services. Oh, okay. So I work, ha I work 20 hours a week. Oh. Have you been working there for? No, just a little while, uh, about about three months, maybe two months. Oh, okay. I just decided I I had retired. I worked for uh, uh, the health the health center. Mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, I was working there for I don't know how many years, three four years, and then I had the problem with my leg, and it got to be difficult. Um, you know how the health center was set up before the old health center, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the trailers were outside. Mm -hmm. We were in the trailers, and I had to cross the driveway to get to the bathroom. And mm -hmm. when in, in the winter time, it was difficult because it's hard. I have difficulty walking in the snow mm -hmm. and on icy areas and stuff. So I just decided I was old enough to retire, so I just retired. Mm -hmm. So I was retired from when I was 65. And then I just went back to work again three or four months ago. And something to do. Yeah, <laughs> just something to do. Uh, can we go back a little bit to, to your mother again? And uh, do you know if she ever used any herbs or medicines? I don't recall that she did. My grandmother did. While my grandmother could see, she used to go out in the woods and pick leaves and roots and all kinds of things and she made she made all kinds of salves and medicines uh, but um, after she lost her eyesight she had uh, Vera used to go with her and mm -hmm. she described the leaves to Vera and Vera would look for them and pick oh. them for her mm -hmm. and she prepared them for for use because whenever somebody got sick she always had always had to go in her little black bag and <laughs> get something to help them. Usually it was some kind of leaves or bark and she'd boil it and make tea. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not too familiar with what, what it was all about. But I know when I caught cold, she always had something to rub on my chest or my nose or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, my mother didn't do it. Uh, I don't know if she knew anything about those. Medicine. Yeah. Did um, when you when you had to go to the doctor when you were children, where did you go? Uh, we used there used to be um, 
it wasn't called a health center, but uh, in Oneida, uh, that I'm trying to remember where the building is, between Morgan's store and uh, that other store, there was a little building. They used to have, the doctors used to come out there periodically and examine all the children that anybody wanted to bring in. Sometimes it was the dentist, sometimes it was a doctor, and I think the tribe, the tribe always had a doctor that uh, went to, you know, whoever was sick. Mm -hmm. And I think the, those were the only doctors I remember going to, except for the few doctors that my mother took us to in Seymour, uh, Dr. Hitner, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I can't remember the dentist name, but there was a dentist that she used to take us to, too. Dr. Libby? Dr. Libby, right. <laughs> I remember him, too. Yeah. <laughs> those were the doctors, those were the doctors that we went to, but I don't recall being sick that often as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, I had bad teeth, but I think most, most young people from mm -hmm. that age area had bad teeth. I think the building that they had in Oneida was called the Relief Office. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. Uh, did you get ever? Did your family ever get anything for food from the Relief Office? A couple of times when my dad. I remember when I was real small. I don't. Uh, my mother would <coughs> get somebody to take her to the Relief Office and get stuff, get the foods and things. So but, similar uh, to the commodities. Pardon? Similar to the commodities? Something, similar? yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to go when I, oh, I can't remember how old I was. But it was during the time my dad worked for WPA and uh, where any jobs he could pick up, you know, it was hard mm -hmm. to find jobs, but any time he, wherever he could work, he would, he would work. Mm -hmm. Work for the different farmers in the area, Ray Melcher, and, um, the mosses, Van mm -hmm. and He worked for those farmers in, uh, in kind of like seasonal work whenever mm -hmm. they had work for him to do. Do you know what your father did when he worked for the WPA? Uh, they worked out by that, um, I don't remember, I don't know what it's called now, out by site two where they have that, mm -hmm. uh, those, they were building something or other there, I don't know what. But that's that's as close as I can come to what he did. He did some kind of building. Maybe the CC camp, the old CC camp building. Yeah, that that's part of it. He worked there. Did you? Are you involved at all in the in the tribal government? No. Do you go to any of the meetings at the? An occasional the one. Has? An occasional one whenever somebody is going, they'll pick me up and take me along. But otherwise, I don't, uh, I'm not that involved with it. Um, I go out and vote every, whenever they're voting for something. I keep track pretty close just from uh, the Gully Visax. Mm -hmm. I keep track of what's going on, but uh, I'm not involved in any of it. And the Gully Visax is a tribal paper? Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you know anything or hear anything about the New York claims? Uh, I hear about it, but I'm not quite sure what it's all about. Um, I'm not quite that involved that I, I know what what the whole problem is or what's going on. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, do, you, do you remember at all ever receiving the fifty two cents from the government a check? Mm -hmm. you did, no. <laughs> <laughs> we used to get that a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, did your parents ever talk about that? I think my mother got. I think my mother and dad got got that little check. But uh, I mean, I remember one time I mean, they must have gotten it because I remember that one time my mother opened the mail and there was a check there, and my dad says, "Oh." There's our big money. He says, <laughs> what are we going to spend it on? <laughs> Do you think, what do you think about the education system that the tribe is putting in place? I'm all for it. I really think it's a great thing that, uh, that we are 
involved in educating our children. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking maybe there are problems, um, but I'm, there's also, you know, with that kind of thing, there's always problems at the beginning, and they're pretty much at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. uh, as, well, as well as it is going, I think it's still pretty much in the learning stage, and, you know, you're working out the problems, but uh, I think it's a good idea. It's a great thing, I think. Do you think they're doing enough in the education area? I don't think so, but, uh, you know, you what, do as much as you can. What, what more do you think that they could be doing? Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking they could probably have more, uh, more rapport between the teachers and the children. It seems sometimes that they're having a lot of problems with the children, and uh, I don't know what the problem is, whether it's the children or the teachers, but uh, I think they need but you to know work. A problem there. Yeah, I, I think they need to work that out. And what what would you tell the youth today? Um, what kind of goals they should have, or what they should be doing? I don't think you can set your goals high enough as a child. As a young person, you know, it's limitless. You can go anywhere you want, but you have to be, you have to want to do it, and you have to get down and do it. Uh, and a lot of times, I think they need more motivation, and they need to uh, realize that the education is all there. All you have to do is work and get to it. No, find out where it is and get to it and do it. Um, I don't think that you can set limits on, on what you want as a, as a young person because it's so, you know, there is so much to learn and so many ways to go that uh, I don't think there's anything you can't do. I went to school and I worked my way through, through college. And, you know, at that point, at the time when I went to school, there wasn't that much help. Uh, I didn't know if the tribe provided anything. I didn't know anything about what the tribe did. So when I went to school, I got a job and I saved money and until I got enough tuition to go into it. And then I tested out as, as um, for the help that was provided by the government for, for students to go into school. And... I worked, sometimes I slept three or four hours a night, you know, going going through nurses training is, is a hard job and uh, it's hard work, but it can be done. I'm proof that it can be done. And nowadays we have all kinds of help, there's all kinds of places you can go and ask for help and request. And if you work hard in school and get keep your grades up, you know, there's, all, there's, there's no end of things that you can do. And I think young people should really, really concentrate on learning and being wanting to do something for themselves and for their families and for their, you know, for their people, for their tribe. Mm -hmm. And there's, I don't think there's any limit to what you can do. What about the elderly program? Do you think that uh, you're doing enough for the elders? Um, I'm not that familiar with what is going, what is being done, but from what I can see, like, uh, they're helping them with their <coughs> homes and they're, uh, uh, have programs out there for them and I'm, I'm thinking they're doing a lot, uh, whether it's enough or not, I, I really couldn't say I'm not, I'm not in a position to, you know, to know whether it's enough, mm -hmm. but, um, I think it, I think I think our tribe is doing real well. There's a, one other area that we didn't cover, and that was when you were young. Uh, what were the holidays that you celebrated? Uh, Christmas, um, Easter, Fourth of July. Um, I don't know if you'd call it a holiday, but fair time was always. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite time of the year. <laughs> and what what stands out in your mind about the the best times that you've had? Fair time. 
that's air time for sure. <laughs> and uh, I guess Christmas and Easter were nice because we always had something special. My mother and dad always had something special. And uh, while we weren't always, didn't always have enough money to have a lot of Christmas presents, we always got something. My mother made things, my dad made things, and uh, when, we, when we couldn't buy things in the store. And I remember, what I remember the, the greatest was the year I got a doll for Christmas, and I couldn't get over that. And it was one of those little dolls, those little celluloid dolls that oh, came yeah. <laughs> That was my doll, and it, oh, I thought it was fantastic. I got a doll. <laughs> But that was my first doll, and uh, I still have it. <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> I still oh, have wonderful. it. <laughs> I have it in a little, packed in a little box in my closet, but uh, oh. I kept it all those years because it was my first doll, and it was a, I just love that little doll. In what uh, church were you affiliated with when you were growing up? The Episcopal Church, this one. This one here? Mm-hmm. Were you confirmed in the Episcopal Church? I was confirmed and baptized. Are you still with the Episcopal Church? Mm-hmm. Okay. I go to church in Green Bay right now because I can't, I can't always make it here. So when I do go to church, I go to church in Green Bay uh, at, uh, at St. Joseph's. St. John's? I don't know. The one over what there. What is the name of that one, Gordy? Or she's gone? The one in Green Bay? Uh, Episcopal the, Church. The only one I know is uh, St. John's. St. John's. St. John's, that's one. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> My memory is slipping on me, but... Okay. Is there anything more that you'd like to add? Well, can't about think any of any part of your life or anything? can't think of anything because uh, I had a good life. I really did. And... Uh, my mother and dad, while they were poor, provided great. You know, I never remember wanting anything that I couldn't, that, you know, anything that I couldn't have. I always had, we always, they all, we always got something for our birthdays. We always got something for Christmas and Easter, of course, was eggs. And we never were short of eggs. <laughs> One other thing, when you were when you were young, uh, growing up at home, um, how did you amuse yourself? Did you have special games that you played, or? Well, we played cards a lot when I was a kid. My mother and dad and all of the kids sit around the kitchen table and played cards. Played. Uh, can't remember what we played, but we played cards all the time. It seemed like. My dad tried to play, teach us how to play schmear, and of course he changed the rules every time. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to play schmear, and when we'd, when we'd get the point that he said, <laughs> and he'd say, oh no, that don't work, but then it worked for him. But <laughs> so I'm never quite sure, you know, I can, I can play schmear now with people, but I'm not quite sure whether, what the rules are, because my dad kind of made up his own rules. <laughs> Did you, uh, uh, on New Year's, did you go for yachting? Pardon? Did you go for yachting on New Year's? No. No, I never, I, no, I never did that. Oh, okay. Well, mostly because we didn't live on the reservation, you know. And most people, I don't know if anybody else done it, did it because we never did. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought maybe you might be familiar with it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've heard of it, mm -hmm. but I've never, I've never participated. Is there anything that we missed? I don't think so. Yes. Okay, well, we want to thank you for oh, coming and doing this interview at such a short notice. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. so